What's up guys, this is Red's Rhetoric, and this is a repeat of a live stream that we already did yesterday. And you may be asking yourself, Red, why are you doing this again? Well, to answer that question, it's because after reviewing the live stream after all was said and done, I realized that the resolution was terrible. When I was screen sharing what I wanted to show, StreamYards decided to down the resolution of my screen share to potato quality. And since I like to pretend to have some standards on this YouTube channel, I decided to redo it right here, right now, but in a way that will not sacrifice resolution. So that's what we're doing. So this is regarding an observation that we did back in November of 2020 where myself and Astronomy Live traveled to the Westfield Countryside Mall and we decided to capture a transit of the International Space Station. And because we were spaced apart by a little less than a kilometer, we actually captured parallax of the International Space Station. By measuring the parallax, by taking into account our baseline and the altitude angle of the moon, we were able to figure out an altitude of the International Space Station. So, spoiler alert, the altitude that we found in my video was 412.4 kilometers, and of course, that altitude shits on the Flat Earthers Parade. So, naturally, it made them very upset, and one such Flat Earther to be very, very upset by this is this guy right here, thought by Jer. So upset is he that he decided it was a good idea to post this screenshot and make an objection without, you know, thinking. So let's go over this right now. In this screenshot, you can see two observation points, observation point A and observation point B with a line in between them. That line is our baseline. Observation point A is where I was at and observation point B is where Astronomy Live was at. You will also notice there is an arrow in the center of the frame. That arrow represents the direction of the moon and thus, that is the direction that we were looking at. And as you can see, the direction of our baseline is not aligned with the direction of that arrow. And when we did the math originally, we had done the math to suggest that Astronomy Live was looking directly over me, not off to my side. And as you can see, that is not the case. So the objection here is quite obvious. He's saying that because we did not take this offset into account, that therefore our original answer is wrong, and therefore no conclusions can be made from it. Well, this is where I tell Jer that he really should have done the math himself, because if he had done the math himself, he would have realized very quickly that it would be in his best interest to keep his whiny mouth shut. Because if you take this offset into account, you realize very quickly that the problem only gets worse for the Flat Earth Conspiracy, and we will discover why in this video. So a quick note about our baseline. As you can see, the reason why we chose the spots that we did is because we wanted to be perpendicular to the transit path. That way there would be no time discrepancies within our footage. And you can see this here in this screenshot, from Astronomy Live's video, link in the description. So after challenging Jer to do the math himself and getting absolutely nowhere with that, because let's face it, asking flat earthers to do math is like removing the stink from a lump of shit with an empty can of a breeze, I said, fuck it, I'll just do this on my own because I'm impatient. And so that is where this program comes in. Behold, this is GeoGebra Classic 5. In this program, you can place points in 3D space and measure the angles between them. And so I decided to use this program to challenge his bullshit. And so we will do that right now. So to be clear, he is saying that we utilized the wrong angle to calculate the slant range to the International Space Station. In my original video, we used this angle in blue, which represents the altitude angle of the moon. However, as you can see with this angle in red, there is actually an offset between the heading of the moon and my direction relative to Astronomy Live. Because of that offset, the altitude angle of the moon is not what we should have used to calculate the slant range to the International Space Station. 
because of this offset, we should have used this angle in green. And while that is correct, he seems to be completely unaware that this new angle is actually a detriment to his Flat Earth conspiracy and his desire for the International Space Station to be lower than it actually is. By taking a more simplified approach to this observation by just using the altitude angle of the moon, the math places the space station lower in altitude than the method that Jer is suggesting. He must really want the space station to truly destroy his conspiracy, and who am I to argue with such a desire? So after making sure all of the points were correctly placed relative to each other, we find that the angle in green measures out to be 68 0.71 degrees. So now we have everything we need to calculate the slant range to the International Space Station. We have our baseline of 765 meters, we have our parallax of 0.0885 degrees, and we have our new angle A which is 68.71 degrees. After crunching the numbers, we see that the slant range to the International Space Station is 461 0.468 kilometers. That is a difference of only 10 kilometers from the original value that Astronomy Live had in his video. But with that said, let's now utilize this slant range to find the altitude of the International Space Station, and we will find that altitude over a curved Earth and a flat Earth to show that there really isn't much of a difference. So here we are once again in GeoGebra, and as you can see, I already have the curve of the Earth to scale. I also have this segment that is the length of our slant range. You will also notice this angle in green, which represents the altitude angle of that segment. So we know that Astronomy Live was looking at the moon at an altitude of 65.67 degrees. So let's place this segment at 65.67. So let me zoom in real quick for precision. Sixty-five point six seven. There it is. And just like that, I can tell you what the altitude of the International Space Station is over the flat Earth. And that's by looking at its position on the y-axis. And as you can see, it is at 420.48 kilometers. So even without taking the curvature of the Earth into account, we are at an altitude that is impossible for a plane to reach. But what is its altitude over the curved Earth? Well, let's find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a segment between A and the center of the Earth. I'm then going to find the intersection between that line and the curve of the Earth, and I'm gonna measure the distance between A and B. So the altitude of the International Space Station over the curved Earth is 423.1 kilometers. And to remind you lovely viewers, my original altitude was 412.4 kilometers. So because of Jer's objection that he decided to post on Twitter, he ended up placing the International Space Station higher in altitude, not lower. He made the problem worse for his conspiracy. So after all is said and done, it looks like the International Space Station is still in space. Who would have thunk it? So, Jer, listen, tip from the top, my guy. Before you make any more objections on the internet, maybe you should do the math first. Maybe then you'll be able to save yourself the embarrassment of being wrong. But, uh, yeah, that is that. To the rest of you, I'll be leaving some reference links down below, so be sure to check those out. Of course, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, make sure you comment, because, you know, algorithm. And I'll be talking to all of you later. My name is Red. This has been his rhetoric, and as always, have a good night.